Hey, it's Chloe Bear. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, thanks for joining today. We're going to be talking about yearly budgets, um, but more specifically, we're going to be talking about how my second year of budgeting went because last year, when I was reviewing my whole year of spending, I realized I went over budget by about $500 a month, which is $6,000 a year. And I decided to implement a yearly budget after that in order to see if I could stay on track better with my money goals. And the numbers are in. And so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at whether or not using a yearly budget actually helped me stay on track better and what my financial situation is last this year in comparison to last year. So if that's the kind of stuff you're into, stick around and be sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe to see more stuff like this. If you've been a part of the Clover community for a while, you'll know that I started my budgeting journey back in October 2018. And in the time between October 2018 to now, which as I'm recording it, it is December 16th, 2020. Um, so I went from being almost $70,000 in debt to less than $30,000 in debt. Um, my cash savings increased from $1,400 to about $11,000. Uh, I increased my total net worth from negative $67,000, negative, to $86,000 in two years, um, which is a $153,000 difference. I mean, $153,000 difference in two years. Like, that's pretty cool. Um, and I fell into the FIRE community, which is the Financial Independence Retire Early community, and I started saving or at least having the goal of saving about half of my income and now I invest and I know what I'm doing. So all of these changes took place in less than two years. But we should, let's talk about first where I was and what my financial picture was two years ago. Okay, so in 2018, I was $67,000 in debt. About 10,000 of that was a car loan and $57,000 of it was a student loan debt with about an 8% interest, which is insane now that I look at that, 8% is so high. But I didn't know, like back then I thought 8% was a normal rate for a student loan. And for some people it is, but uh, really you wanna keep your interest on something like a student loan in order to consider it like a good debt kind of, uh, you wanna keep it less than 7%. So, and really closer to four or 5% or even less than that. So we'll talk more about that in a second. But I, at the time I had, like I said, $1,400 in savings. I had $630 in my checking. So that, that was like all the money I had to my name. And cause my 401k only had about $10,000 in it. And I put about 4% of my paycheck, which was the match at the time when I was working there or working at my job. So um, I brought in about $2,200 every two weeks from my full-time job. And I also had some freelance that I did that brought in like an extra $200 a month. Good news is I had no credit card debt and I also really had no real budget, which isn't a good news. It's just where I was at the time. What's really crazy is the way my spending habits have changed. So in 2018, I was making about $67,000 a year and I was spending about $600 every two weeks just on eating out, being drunk, being hungover, and um, like spending money on GoPuff and Grubhub and drinks and eating out and like just all of that stuff. And so $600 every two weeks, which is crazy, especially at when I'm making $67,000 a year, like I was living paycheck to paycheck. I really didn't decide to make the change until I got a new job and I was starting to make a little bit more money. And so I was like, wait a second, if I actually pay attention to where my money's going and track all of my spending, I might actually not have to pay this student loan debt off for the rest of my life. So that's when I decided in October 2018 to start tracking everything that I spent and make a budget and start having some goals. So after doing that, after deciding in 2018 to make a budget, I made a budget. And after the first year, let's look at how my numbers were after my very first year of budgeting. Okay, so after my very first year of budgeting, without an annual plan, without an annual budget, I went from being $67,000 
in debt to $51,000 in debt. I put down $19,000 on my debt, which was an average of about $1,600 a month. Uh, I refinanced my student loans, thank God, uh, and I took my loan down from a 8.8% 8 .8 interest to a 4.75, which is a lot better. Um, and then now I have a budget. I tracked everything I spent for an entire year. Um, and I stuck to my budget eight out of the 12 months, which is pretty decent for somebody who went from never really using a budget and not really having a budget to suddenly getting on a budget and having no idea what I was doing other than I had some goals and I wanted to accomplish those things. Um, I, after the first year, I saved about $13,000 in my savings. But at the time when I was doing this, I actually considered some of my real estate investment that $13,000. So I really only had about $3,000 of cash on hand and then $10,000 was invested in a real estate investment. So I didn't have that much cash on hand, but I had a decent amount in an investment. So, um, and I had about $800 in my checking. So I saved about $27,000 in my 401k, which is crazy. Um, and I also put 11% of my paycheck into it. So the 27,000 is includes my employer match and how the, uh, the market did in 20, from 2018 to 2019. So I also got a raise, I increased and I, I got a raise and I got a promotion. So I increased my salary by 16% in a year. Uh, and I spent about $63,000 in 20 for in that time period, but over 20 to, or almost 20,000 of it was on debt. So if you adjust it to subtract my payments towards debt, I really only spent about $44,000 in a whole year, even though I was making more than I ever made. So in 2019, I was feeling really good after my first year of budgeting until I actually looked at the numbers and saw that I was overspending from my like planned budget uh, by about $500 a month because I was not incorporating things that don't happen every month. I wasn't thinking about, you know, having to pay for car maintenance that happens like quarterly, or I didn't think about how to budget for travel that obviously doesn't happen every month, but it happens several times a year. And so I ended up spending $10,000 on travel, which is a crap ton of money to not budget or plan for. Um, so it's just like, I couldn't think of, I didn't think of things like special occasions. I didn't think of things like Christmas. I didn't think of things like when somebody comes to town and you go out and you show them around Chicago. Um, so that shows in my numbers. And because of that, I decided to make a yearly budget that I would basically every month after I finished a budgeting period, I would take all of those numbers and dump it into the pretty much identical spreadsheet. And I would then just see the numbers update and then I would adjust my monthly budget accordingly. If you want to learn how to make a yearly budget, I do have a video to that, which I will leave in the links below. And I also have a blog post about it that shows pictures on how to do it. And I even give you my templates. Anyway, let's look at my financial picture in 2020 versus 2019 and even 2018. I am $29,000 in debt, which is a $21,000 difference from the year before. Um, in just a year, I put down $22,000 on my debt, which is an average of about $1,800 a month. Um, I refinanced my student loans from 4.75% to 3.54%. So it's basically free money now. Um, and I stayed under budget or on budget um, for 19 out of the 26 pay periods. So for those of you who don't know, I budget based off of my paychecks. Um, so that's why there's 26 of them. I get paid every two weeks. Um, and that's a 73% success rate. So it's not an A. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's a D which doesn't make me feel as good, but, or no, is it, man, it's been so long since I've been in school. So 90s is like A, 80s is B, 7, yeah, so it's a C, it's a C, it's a low C. So you know what, for year two, I'll keep getting better and um, it's nice to know that, you know, I was still on track. So anyway, um, I have about $10,000 in an emergency fund, which would last me about three months. Um, $53,000 I have invested in a local real estate project. Um, I fund flips in the Chicago area with a contractor that I know. Um, $69,000 I have invested in a 401k. $69,000. Do you remember two years ago, I had $10,000 invested in my 401k and you can only 
you can only max out your contributions to a 401k and it's $19,500. So I only put, and in 2019, I didn't max out my 401k, but last year, as in 2020, I put in the full $19,500 and I still have $69,000 invested. So that's a $42,000 increase, even though I only put in about $20,000. And it's that big of an increase because when the market went down in um, March, I like bumped my contributions all the way up to 25% because you know, when the market go down, that's the opportunity for you to buy stocks on sale. So that's what I did. I also sold my car in 2019 at the very end, but it counted and my budgeting year is kind of weird. I just, this year, 2021, I adjusted it. So now my budgeting year follows the calendar year, but in 2019 and 2022, it actually went from October to October. So that's why it's a little confusing, but I sold my car for $10,000 in this 2020 timeframe and I got $10,000 for it. The car cost me $20,000, but I immediately invested that in the real estate projects that I've been investing in. And I've invested that $10,000 four times each time I have made 20% off of that investment. So it's pretty much, the car was pretty much free at this point because I've made more than what I would have made if I had not bought the car, sold it and invested it. If you look at compound entrance, so let's say I invested the $10,000, I made 20% off of that after my first investment, which puts us at $12,000. So then I reinvested that again for 20% and that puts us at, so 20% of $12,000 is $2,400. So that puts me at $14,400,000. Yes, that's right. So then I reinvested again and I made 20% off of that and that is, almost $3,000, so that puts me at $17,000. And so I reinvested that again, and that puts me at a little over $3,000, so that's the whole price of a car. That is $20,000, so that's how that works. <laughs> I'd also just like to say that I was an English major, so my math isn't always great, but luckily 20% is really easy because it's just doubling the first number. So in terms of what I spent in 2020, I spent about $7,000 last year, which at first glance is more than what I spent in 2019, but about $5,000 of that was on taxes and $22,000 of that was debt. So when you subtract that, I actually only spent $42,000, which is less than what I spent in 2019, even though I'm making 16% more than I did the year before. What's really cool about that is it means I avoided lifestyle inflation because even though I now live alone, which is obviously more expensive, um, and I also own a dog, which also is more expensive than not owning a dog, I managed to keep my expenses less than what I did the year before. But besides that, in 2020, my financial picture includes that with my interest in club, co income, my Clobear income, and my regular nine to five income, this is all after taxes, I made about $85,000, again, after taxes, um, which means I lived off of about 50% of my take home pay, which is pretty great because remember, I saved $20,000 of my nine to five pay by just automatically directing that into my 401k. So does a yearly budget work? I mean, if you just look at those numbers, the answer is yes. I saved $42,000 more and I spent less. And I'm just like really proud of myself. <laughs> like to go from 2018 where I didn't know the first thing about money except for I did the envelope method from Dave Ramsey and that really doesn't teach you how to money. It just teaches you like the very, very, very basics of how to money, I guess. It doesn't, but it doesn't teach you how to invest. It doesn't teach you how to prioritize. It doesn't teach you how to change your budget. It doesn't teach you how to adjust. And so I would just every month have an envelope that was filled with expenses for, you know, entertainment, transportation, whatever. And every single month I would go over budget. Obviously it wasn't working when I was spending six thousand six $600 every two weeks, i.e. $1,200 a month on entertainment, like just out the window. It's crazy too, because you can see just even from looking at my numbers, if I had waited even a year more, I would have missed out on so much growth. Like if you just think about 2019 to 2020, uh, I 
I ended up saving $42,000. And that's a six, I saved $60,000 over the course of two years just in my 401k. So it's like, if I hadn't done that, none of this growth would have happened. And so it's like, in your head, if, if you're one of those people who's like, next year I'll learn about it, next maybe in two years, in five years I'll finally learn how to do that and I'll just catch up. Like, you're missing out on so much growth. So if you can start now, start now, because it makes a huge difference. If I hadn't started when I started, I would have continued to live beyond my means. I would have also continued to live paycheck to paycheck, not really saving and just kind of like hoping it would work out. So I would have missed out on my huge real estate investment, which is about $50,000 or $55,000 almost right now. Um, I would have missed out on my 401k, which is at $60,000 right now. So it's just like those things, they matter. And starting now matters, even if it's just a little bit. Okay, so let's just take a look at my yearly budget and see how much money I spent in each category for the whole year. So over here, we've got groceries really stayed about the same. I spent $3,100 on groceries, which is actually a little bit less than what I spent the year before. Um, Clobear had more expensives than I was anticipating. So it was $1,100, but that kind of evened itself out because a lot of that was for um, art supplies for pet portraits. So Really, I had to spend money, but I also made that money back in doing pet portraits. So kind of even itself out and I'm not mad about spending anything on my business. So um, for health and medical, 827, which is a lot less than what I spent in 2019. Um, that's because I don't do an expensive gym membership anymore. And in fact, now with the pandemic, I don't really do any gym membership now. I just do Beachbody. Um, and then my home expenses, I spent about 18,000, well, really closer to 19,000, um, because I live alone. So I'm not mad about that either. It was definitely a huge expense and I'm hoping to buy a rental property soon and live out of one of the units so that I won't have nearly as large of an expense, but, um, yeah. So transportation, I only spent $1,600. It's probably impartially because of the pandemic, but it's also a lot less than what I spent on transportation last year. Um, $1,500 in personal, uh, which is like I've said in a video in the past, personals like beauty and shopping and random things. Um, like, you know, a lot of times it's plant expenses. I really like plants. So, and I'm not always that great at keeping them alive. So I have to buy more plants to fill my plant need. <laughs> but anyway, um, entertainment is about 2100. There's probably a good chunk of that was food related, which I'm not proud of, but also it's 20, it was 2020. So, I mean, what else were we going to do? Um, utility cell phone stayed about the stayed at $3,100 travel 3,600. So a lot of this, you're probably wondering, how did you still spend $3,600 on travel in 2020? If you know, we couldn't really travel. So a lot of that actually came from a trip at the tail end of 2019 when I went to Germany and France and Switzerland to see some of my friends. Um, and so I think that was probably about $1,200. And then a lot of this too is stuff that I prepaid for and now I have a credit for because we had to cancel the trip. So I originally was supposed to go to Austin and California and Arizona and all of that got canceled. So I have... Um, credits for a lot of that stuff. So debt was 22,000 what I spent on it. Um, the Chicago Boss Babes, which is no more, I spent about $200 on and that was mostly for uh, the few brunches we went on, but also um, the uh, website hosting and stuff like that. Um, taxes at $5,500, um, which will actually end up paying even more in taxes in 2021. Um, special occasions, 1900 hundred yeah that was a burp i'm probably not gonna edit that out <laughs> um it was more like a hiccup it wasn't really a burp it was like a like a, a single hiccup mm -hmm. um special occasions 1900 so that's like somebody comes to town i buy something for somebody's birthday you know random things like that um, that's a new category. I didn't have that in 2019. Um, and then dating was $1,200. It was a lot less because I didn't date for at least six months this year. Um, obviously, the pandemic helped with that too. I spent $400 on a keyboard. Um, I also spent about $600 on donations. Um, that looks like it's an overage because I wasn't planning on spending that much on donations. 
Um, but really that ended up paying for itself because I donated all the proceeds to one of the events that I did. Um, and so it really evened itself out. Parking was really expensive. Oak Park parking is the worst. So I spent about $370 on parking in 2020. Um, and then my renter's insurance was $59. My dog, I spent about $1,600, but that's because there's a lot of startup costs to owning a dog. So like the adoption fee, um, and some, I did take an emergency visit to the vet because she ate some grapes. Um, and you know, like the supplies that go with owning a dog. So that, and then the one credit card fee that I have, which is $99. So at first glance, it looks like I spent about $70,000. But like I said earlier, if you subtract the money that I spent on taxes and the money that I spent on debt, it's really closer to about $42,000 for a whole year. Um, and I was technically under budget. So I, um, I budgeted more than what I spent, um, which is a great place to be. Whereas last year I was over budget by $500 every single month. As most of you know, I'm really into values-based, uh, I'm sorry, I just need to stretch. Really, it's values-based budgeting, which means that I really like aligning my money with my values. And what's really cool about looking at this is you can see where my top expenses were. If you subtract the, the taxes, because like I don't really have a choice in whether or not I pay taxes, I have to pay taxes. Um, but my top, expenses were debt home and travel and that's pretty reflective of who i am as a person like i like value i, I value financial independence um and spending money on debt makes me feel good so i like having options financial independence to me is freedom home i really like having a comfortable place to live and that's one of the reasons i'm gonna go into real estate investment and start um, purchasing some rental properties so i can actually lower my cost on my home um technically but it'll still be an expense um and travel will always be a high value item for me even in 2020. so it's really nice to know that my money is going to the places that i value most most um especially the financial independence one is definitely my highest value because if you take into consideration all the money that i saved in 2020 that's an additional expense in a way um because it's not you know money that i'm spending or it's not money that's available to me so anyway now let's just take a look at the numbers and 2019 versus 2020 did an annual budget really work so first up is entertainment so in 2019, I spent almost $4,000 on entertainment, and in 2020, I spent $2,100 on entertainment. Now, that is because of a couple of things. So at first glance, it looks like I only spent 1.7K less than um, what I did in 2019, um, and that's partially because of the pandemic, but it's also because in 2020, I made two new categories, dating and special occasions. So some of those expenses went into special occasions and some of those expenses went into dating, um, which a lot of those I like looped into personal last year, which is why my personal was so high, but we'll get to that later. Groceries in 2019 and 2020, I spent about $3,100. So really not a big change there. Clover, I spent a lot more money on Clover than I did in 2020. Uh, what's interesting about that is in 2020, my stats for Clover went way up because the website's been around longer. Um, but I spent, you know, half of what I spent in 2019. 2019, a lot of that cost is coming from, obviously I have the same expenses that I had in 2020, but I also spent money on new photos for the Clover, which I'll probably do in 2021. Um, and I also spent a lot of money on Facebook advertising and um, I had to buy some equipment and things like that. So... I think that's where most of that money went to, but I'm not totally sure. <laughs> um, for health medical, I spent half of what I usually spend, and that's, again, because I no longer go to an expensive gym membership. Um, I spend like $20 a month on beach, but not even $20. Like beach body, I think, is like $40 a quarter, so it's super cheap. Um, home, my expenses for home went way up, and um, that's because in... Um, 2019, I lived with a roommate, and then in 2020, I decided to move out and get my own place, which was a great decision. This one's a crazy one. So transportation, I went from $3,700 to $1,600. And that's partially because, like I said, I sold my car, so I don't have insurance payments or gas payments, but I, it's also just crazy because, um, 
you know, obviously with the pandemic, I wasn't traveling as much, but it's nice to know I'm not spending nearly as much because even, even if we hadn't had the pandemic, I probably would have maybe spent, I don't know, 500 to a thousand dollars more, which is still less than what I was spending having a car. This one is crazy. So in 2019, I spent about $5,000 on personal. And in 2020, I spent $1,500. And like I said, in 2019, my personal ended up being like a catch all for things. So I would put dating expenses in there. I would put special occasion expenses in there. I would do all of those things. So it just ballooned out of control. So yes, I spent $3,400 less this year, but some of that's made up for in, you know, dating and special occasions. So, but either way, I spent less in personal and I spent less in special occasions. So that's, it's, it's starting to look pretty good. There's also a pretty obvious big difference in 2019 versus 2020, which is travel. So I spent almost $10,000 on travel in 2019. And this year I spent $3,600. But like I said, a lot of that's like credits and things that I'll get back. And then another big difference is in debt, I spent $3,000 more in debt this year. So um, that's good too. Now, how do I feel about all this? Pretty good. I feel like I have made some serious strides. I am spending less on entertainment. I'm budgeting more accurately, which is really the important part because if you go over $500 a month, it's not that you have no willpower. It's just that you're not budgeting accurately. So I feel like... Now with the extra categories that I added, I'm a lot more accurately tracking my money and it just makes things a lot easier for me. So now it almost feels like I'm an autopilot. Um, but at the end of 2020, I did decide to kind of take a break and not worry so much about budgeting. I'm still budgeting, but I, I kind of like expanded my categories to allow myself to spend a little bit more money and enjoy the holidays. But it's nice that I know I can do that because I've already set up the structure in place and I know that if an emergency arose, I'd be able to handle it. And it's also just nice to know that like, I'll get back on track as soon as I'm done with my little holiday of, you know, not being as strict with my money. So I'm gonna keep doing the annual budget and you know, what's new for 2021 is probably I'll focus a little bit more on saving money for a real estate investment rather than a, um, rather than putting more money down on my debt. The thing is, there's really no point for me to pay off my debt early because the interest rate is so low. Um, it's almost like free money. So I will make more money investing it into a rental property or even just in the real estate investing that I currently do. Um, so there's just not a whole lot of reason for me to pay it off early. So that's what I am going to do is I'm going to just invest instead and focus on building wealth rather than just being debt free because I'd rather be wealthy than just be debt free. So that's what I'm working on. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was long. So if you got to the end, be sure to let me know because holy cow, thanks for Thanks for sticking around, um, but let me know if you use a, a, an annual budget or how you stay on track throughout the year um, and what your plans are for 2021. So anyway, if you haven't already, please hit that like button. It really helps me a lot. Um, and again, too, if you haven't subscribed, that's also super helpful. So uh, thank you so much. And thanks again for being around and hope your 2021 is off to a good start. Bye.